In September 2020, a battery energy storage system in Liverpool, UK suddenly caught fire. The fire didn't just burn, it raged for nearly 59 hours. Thick smoke, violent explosion and completely destroyed best container left the industry shocked. And when investigators finally had a chance to investigate, the root cause pointed to one of the most feared failure modes in lithium-ion technology thermal runaway. And this wasn't an isolated incident. From the APC explosion in Arizona to 300 megawatt Tesla's mega pack fire in Australia. Best fire events have been reported across the world. The industry knows that the large scale storage is essential uh, to meeting the renewable energy targets. Yet the threat of thermal runaway is still one of the biggest reason investors hesitate. So. What exactly is thermal runaway? Why does it happen? And more importantly, what can engineers do to prevent it? Let's break it down in this video. Before we begin, if you want a structured and practical way to learn grid scale battery energy storage system, do check out my course grid scale battery energy storage system for professionals. It builds from fundamental all the way to the real world engineering applications. More on that later in this video. So what exactly is thermal runaway and why does it turn a silent bus container into a fire that burns for days? Well, to understand that we need to zoom in and see what happens inside a lithium ion cell when things starts to go wrong. Thermal runaway is not an instant explosion. It's a chain reaction that builds up in stages. And the first stage is something most people never notice. It begins with what we call battery compromise. This can happen because the battery overheats or it gets overcharged or maybe a tiny internal shot develops. Sometimes it's even caused by manufacturing defect that no one can detect from the outside. But in all cases, one thing starts happening inside the cell the temperature begins to rise. And once the temperature rises beyond its comfort zone, the chemistry inside the cell becomes unstable. The electrolyte, remember this is a flammable liquid, starts breaking down. Pressure increases, the battery is now under stress. If nothing stops it here, we enter the second stage. In this stage, the pressure inside the cell becomes so high that the casing can't hold it anymore. The cell breaks. And what comes out isn't just smoke, it's a cloud of highly flammable vaporized electrolyte. This is called off-gassing. What makes this so dangerous is that off-gassing can go on quietly for 10 to 30 minutes. No flames, no sound, no smoke. Just a container slowly filling up with combustible gases. And this is the best opportunity to catch the problem. A good gas detection system can pick this up before anything visible happens and shuts down or isolate the faulty module. But if off-gassing goes unnoticed, then the event escalates. And that brings us to the third stage, smoke production, which is really the beginning of thermal runaway. At this point, the inside of the cell breaks down completely. The anode and cathode short circuit. Temperature shoot past 300 degrees Celsius. And now smoke is produced from within the battery. This is where the chain reaction truly begins. One overheating cell sprays the heat to the next one. The next cell fails in the same way and passes that heat to the next cell. It becomes a dynamo effect, cell after cell, module after module, until the entire rack is at risk. What makes this stage especially dangerous is that the smoke itself is combustible and in a sealed container it starts accumulating. This sets up a perfect condition for what happened in the APS Arizona incident, where the firefighters opened the container door, fresh oxygen rushed in and boom. A massive explosion followed. And finally, we enter the fourth stage, fire. Now flames appear, or sometimes don't appear at all, but the container is filled with mixture of hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and vaporized electrolyte. Even without visible flame, the atmosphere inside is explosive. If ignition occurs, the fire becomes self-sustaining. The cathode material actually releases oxygen as they burn. That means the fire feeds itself. 
at this stage even if you disconnect the supply it's of no use you can try to cover the fire from outside but inside the chemistry has already taken over this is why the tesla's mega pack fire in australia burned for four days straight firefighters knew the safest solution was often to let it burn itself out while protecting the surroundings so now the question is what triggered this chain reaction in the first place well inside a battery several things can kick off the process overcharging can strip too many lithium from the cathode damaging its crystal structure charging at a very low temperature can cause lithium plating thin metallic layers that create sharp dendrites these dendrites can short the separator causing an internal short circuit even under voltage is a problem when a lithium ion battery is drained too far copper dissolves from the current collector travels through the electrolyte and plates somewhere else as a metal deposit that again can lead to a short circuit in every one of these cases heat is the common result and when heat keeps building inside the closed cell you eventually reach a point where the separator melts once that melts a short circuit becomes direct and violent that's the point where thermal runaway become inevitable now an important thing many engineers underestimate uh, the temperature uniformity a battery pack doesn't fail because every cell gets hot it fails because one cell gets hotter than the rest one weak cell ages faster its internal resistance rises its it, it generate more heat and that single cell become the first dynamo in the chain reaction that's why modern grid scale system rely heavily on liquid cooling air cooling just can't extract heat uh, fast enough from the batteries and that's why the liquid cooling is preferred and uneven cooling was a contributing factor in several real world failures so how do we actually prevent thermal runaway well the first line of defense is always the battery management system or bms this is the system monitoring voltage current and temperature of every cell a good bms prevents overcharging prevents under voltage and shuts down the pack if anything looks abnormal but no matter how good a bms is it can't detect what's happening chemically inside a cell and that's why the second line of defense gas detection is critical if the system can detect off gas before smoke appears operator gets precious minute to shut down the faulty rack activate ventilation and stop the event before it escalates and then finally we have fire suppression effective suppression focuses on containing the fire propagation reducing oxygen concentration and buying enough time for the system to stabilize so that is about the thermal runaway and its different causes now thermal runaway may look like uh, a sudden disaster but it always follows a clear pattern and we talked about that first is a compromised cell then off gassing then smoke and finally fire or explosion and the real goal of for every engineer is to detect the problem in stage 2 long before the first flame ever happens now before we wrap up if you are serious about building a, a strong career in the battery energy storage industry i want you to invite uh, to check out my course grid scale battery energy storage system for professionals this course is designed exactly for engineers like you people who want a clear structured practical way to understand how best projects actually work in the real world we starts right from the basics then we move through the system architecture the different practical considerations how the sizing of batteries transformer and power conversion system is done we cover everything and by the end of the course you will have the confidence to speak uh, and work on the grid scale battery energy storage system and here is the best part the entire course comes with 14 days no questions asked money back guarantee that means you can join today go through the lessons download the resources start applying what you learn and if at any point in the first 14 days you feel the course isn't right for you just email us and you get full refund no risk no pressure no conditions it's completely risk free investment in your career and honestly uh, that's exactly why many engineers from utilities epcs oems and renewable energy companies have already joined 
and have started upgrading their knowledge on BES. And just for my YouTube viewers, I'm offering a flat 20% off on the course if you join on or before 15th of December 2025. You'll get the discount coupons in the description of this video along with the course link. So that's all for this video guys. I hope it was helpful. If you found the video helpful, then do like the video and do share it with the people you think might be interested in knowing this. And do subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the future updates. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.